What if I told you that the biggest reason your posts or your graphics or anything you were making visually was getting ignored wasn't because the content sucked, it was because the graphic wasn't eye-catching enough. And thanks to programs like Canva, you don't need to be a graphic designer or you don't need to know how to use Photoshop or any of these fancy programs to create incredible eye-catching graphics. You just need to know a few different tips and hacks that kind of can blow the park wide open because the tools I'm gonna to teach you today can be applicable in so many different ways when you start thinking in the right way and you know the little hacks to make incredible things happen. Because you have like less than a second to capture someone's attention. Think about how fast you scroll through Instagram. Are your posts standing out or are people just being like, eh, and scrolling past because there is nothing there that's capturing their attention. So in today's tutorial, I wanna show you how to create a graphic that looks like this. We're gonna do a quick like three minute version and then an, a more advanced version like this one in case you wanna do a little bit more fancy pants things and really up level your designs. They look like they were made in Photoshop by a professional and not you dabbling in Canva as a small business owner. So let's dive in. So firstly, why does this creating this depth effect work? Why does layering things work? It's because when we as a viewer see something that's on top of something else, we, we notice that depth it looks more interesting and catches our attention more because we sense it as being a three-dimensional space rather than a flat, boring space. It kind of is another signal to our eyes as a viewer that this is the most important thing. The thing that's in front is more important than the thing that is behind and it kind of gives us some more visual information to tell the story. And these kind of hacks and tips are the things that separate an amateur from a professional. And so I'm very excited to teach it to you. So if we have not met before, hello, my name is Jackie and I'm pretty much a graphic designer who takes professional design principles, branding ideas and Canva tips and stops the gatekeeping so that you as an everyday business owner can get the effects of great branding and great graphics in your own business because design is way too important to be slept on and I wanna make sure you're taking advantage of it so you can make more sales in your business. And so if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials or podcasts. So first up, let's create this design. You can even time if you want to. I'm gonna try to keep this under three minutes that you can see exactly how to do this. So first up, you wanna open up Canva. So go to canva.com and press create and choose whatever size graphic you wanna do. I'm gonna choose a social media, Instagram post, but you can obviously do whatever you like. Then you wanna choose a photo that you're going to use to create our depth to it. So I like having something that has a foreground and a background. So a subject and the background. So this could be a duck in a field or it could be a person anywhere. Um, so you can either go to elements and search up a photo. Let's go um, duck for want of a better example. And if I go down to photos here, I can press see all and I might think, you know what, this one's really great and I could do the effect with that. I'm not going to, to do that today, but that option is there for you. I'm going to navigate to the different folders here and choose my personal brand photo shoot because I find them really fun to use. So I'm just going to find a photo here that I can use for this tutorial. Let's choose this one of me on the staircase. So I'm going to just crop this design first. I can use those rectangular handles to do that or I can press on these um, circular handles but hold down shift and it will crop it at that time make this a little bit larger. Now we need to do this. There's two options to doing this. One is by using the background to move out. The other option is using magic grab. Now, both of these are pro features. So if you don't have Canva pro, I'd suggest getting it. There's a link below if you want to give it a try for a month, or if you don't have Canva pro, you can search my YouTube and there's a tutorial there to remove the background for free. If you don't have Canva pro, but I'm going to pretend you have Canva pro because honestly, I believe all businesses should have it if you're serious about growing your business. So let's go to first the magic grab option. This is option one of doing this. I'm going to go to edit and inside the magic studio here, I'm going to scroll across to magic grab. When I click this, what it's going to do is it's going to pick out the foreground from the background and it's going to let me select it. So it's going to say, Jackie, you're the foreground here. Is that correct? I'm going to press, yep, that's it and press grab. So I've just selected me and pressed grab. I could choose and select different areas of this image if I wanted to select something different or select additional things. But this one here is quite straightforward. What it's now done is you can see, I can actually move me away. Gee, it's done a good job of that. And it's replaced the stairs where I was and just made me sit on top of it there. So if that one works for you, this is a great way to do it. You can also use a background mover instead and I will show you that later on in the more advanced version of this tutorial. So next up, we need to add in our text. So I'm gonna bring this image and just make it that full kind of size. And I wanna leave a little bit of room somewhere for my text to go. So I'm actually gonna bring myself down a little bit, crop that back up because we had that spare pot spot of image. I'm gonna press T on my keyboard to insert a text box and make some text. I would recommend adding some big text in here. So I'm just gonna type big text for now. Now it's important you have text that's really visible on whatever background you're using. So for me, my brand font is Poppins. I'm gonna to choose to make this quite bold and I'm gonna to choose to make my line spacing, letter spacing smaller, cause that's my brand style and choose to make this kind of a white version. So I can then have that there. That's looking quite cute. 
Again, stay tuned for the more advanced version because I'm going to do a lot more to this. Then all I need to do is put this text behind me. So I'm going to go to position here and press either press backward and it's going to send it back a layer. I can press forward if I needed to. Or if I toggle across to this layers tab, I can then move things around and drag them. So I could drag me on top, or drag me on the bottom and move everything around as needed. So if you have multiple layers, this is a great way to do it. And there you have it. That's the exact way that you can quite easily and quickly add layers and depth to your images so they stand out more and look more professional and more exciting. Now, I want to show you some other versions of this now that it's been hopefully less than three minutes of showing you how to do that simple version and show you a few fun workarounds. And they're going to be so exciting for you to add some extra level of professionalism to your designs and make them really stand out. And they're not actually that hard to do when you know how. So let's dive in. So a slight tangent for you is I've seen a lot on Instagram these days, people creating kind of organic style content. So content that looks like just being slapped together, but it has a professional edge to it. And what often people are doing is they're adding in a screenshot or a box of text to a Canva design image and they're using this layers feature. So for example, I had a screenshot. I'm just gonna upload uh, an image here that uh, we got made and it's just some screenshots of some texts that my clients have said about working with me. And what I'm going to do is make this appear behind me. So I'm gonna delete this for a moment. And what I can do, so say this was a box of text you might choose to pop in here. Say this was a screenshot of your notes or a screenshot of some messages. If I wanted this to look like quite natural and just me just hanging out with some text, I could actually make this a bit smaller and put this being behind me. So I could go to position, bring next to being behind and we have this really cool thing and now because I've done magic, magic grab I could actually move myself across on the steps a little bit as long as it looks to look natural to make sure you can still see the part of the graphic I needed to see and that's just a really effective way to create some depth in an image that still looks quite like thrown together and organic but a little bit more interesting so I've just got up uh, uh, someone that I follow called the nude nutritionist and she does this exact same thing you can see this text looks quite simple it's quite plain but she's added it to being behind herself and just added in a couple of extra little bits and so every now and then and she hasn't even done it on that many of the slides, but to just add in a little bit of visual interest through that. And just by having this little part of her head just in front of the text creates that little bit of depth, that little bit more professionalism for a very low lift effort. And so let's now look at ways I can make this initial design even more interesting. Something I like to do, especially if you've got, say, say for example, you have some text here, but it's being covered up quite a lot by your head or by a particular part of the object. Then what you can do is duplicate this. So if I click on the text box and press duplicate here, it's gonna make two versions of this. Now I'm gonna overlay this back on top, like so. Then I'm gonna hit, while my text is selected, hit on effects and choose the hollow option. And I can choose the thickness or thinness of this and I can make sure I overlay it perfectly. And it kind of looks like if I move it off my head just a smidgen, because that's probably a little bit over overkill. It kind of looks, it kind of looks like my head's kind of going in between it, which I find is a really fun thing to try. Something else you can do while we've got you selected as a totally different object is I could go to edit while I've got my image selected of me, go to shadows and I could give myself an outline. So I might choose to make more of a scrapbooky style thing and I could choose the coloring of that by clicking on this color circle and I could choose the sizing of the outline by making it thin or making it thick. And I can choose if I want it to be slightly transparent or not. And again, that just creates a cool level of visual interest on the design and it makes it just, we're just kind of doing little things that level it up, level it up, level it up. Another thing I could do is go and maybe even add some more scrapbook style. If your brand was more of a scrapbook style, I could go to elements over here and search for things like paper. I'm gonna uncheck, uncheck photos, go to graphics here. Maybe I could grab this little bit here and again because I've got all these layers I can start to create so much depth so I could grab this and pop it over here behind me go to position and drag it to being underneath me there is also shortcuts on your keyboard for this if you're doing lots of layers if I go to arrange you see we've got the back and forward you can actually also click on your keyboard and do command yeah. square bracket to go up and the other square bracket to go backwards. Um, and so you can just go command or control if you're on a PC and change your layers just like so. So even if I go up here, I can go all the way up by pressing square bracket and all the way down by changing the square bracket. So that's always a fun thing to try too. So let's add in a little bit more layers and depth here. So maybe I wanna choose paper. Maybe I choose a little um, paper airplane here. Let's flip it to go the other direction. And maybe I choose to put that on top of me so it creates even more levels of depth. Maybe I choose this one here, make it smaller, crop it, pop it behind me using those keyboard shortcuts. Then maybe I get some 
up in here dry flower and I could add in some more little elements and again I can put as many of these in as, as I want to but you can see here that I'm arranging I'm making sure that I'm still keeping that subject the main focal point and I could add that to being on top or I could add one being behind if something's going big, I'm making sure that it's behind, okay? And I'm also creating a bit of size difference. You can see this paper's quite large, but this is quite small. I might even change the color of this flower to being purple, because obviously, <laughs> why not? I'm gonna move myself across here so I'm actually more centered on the steps as well. And I could even maybe add in a box so I could press R on my keyboard to insert a square bring this to being maybe even behind my head here and choosing my layers to make that like so. Maybe deleting my top bit there. Maybe we'll fade this down a little bit. And there is so much happening now, but in the best way, it's created a lot of visual interest in my design just from adding a couple of different things that build in those layers. Now I wanted to show you as well how you can use this with just a background mover. So if I insert my image again, what I wanna do if I don't wanna use magic grab is have my image, but then duplicate it. So click on this duplicate button. So I have two of them and overlay these on top of each other so that they're lining up perfectly. I'm just gonna make these both small so I can see them tops and bottoms. So that's lined up perfectly. I'm gonna to go to click on the top image and press background remover. While that's happening, I'm gonna crop the image down to just where I where I need the version of me so that I don't accidentally click on it all of the time. It's just it's just good workflow, friends. Trust me on this. Just crop the image down to wherever you are or the subject is. Now you can see I've got two versions. I've got a cutout version of me and I've got the background version of me. So I can go ahead and do the exact same thing I did earlier by adding in those multiple layers of text. So let's grab this text box over here. Maybe put that there. I can even, again, send it to being behind me, like so. I can even do that for the whole design if I want to. Just duplicate this. And look, how effective does that, does that look after just doing a couple of little things? I, can, I might even choose to like lower the transparency of some of these or make them really big totally up to you but let your imagine run wild here because doing little hacks like this is a difference between an amateur looking graphic and a professional looking graphic and friends obviously there is so much to learn about canva and i want to make sure that if you're wanting to know why your graphics aren't looking as good as you want them to or some canva shortcuts you might not be utilizing that could be saving you hours i would love to help you i have a totally free video that you can watch called design tools for 100k and that's helping you use design tools just like canva to grow and scale your business i'm going to go through design mistakes you're probably making canva shortcuts and show you how to design a graphic in real time and all the things I'm thinking about to make sure that that graphic as a professional designer is performing for my business to help make me sales. Because if you are not doing this properly, you're probably losing sales even though you're putting in tons of effort and I hate to see that happen. So make sure you hit the link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen to watch that free masterclass now and I would love to hear what you think. So thanks for joining me. If you found this video useful, make sure you hit subscribe for many more videos like this and hit like to show me that this kind of content is something that you'd like to see more of. All right, I'll see you next week for another tutorial. Bye.